So we are going to start with the cancer uh, prevention guidelines from the American Institute for Cancer Research, also the World Cancer Research Fund. That is really our go-to for information on the latest research on food, nutrition, physical activity, lifestyle, and it's what we promote with, with our clients as well. It says prevention, but it's also cancer risk reduction for, for cancer survivors. Um, the only difference there is that sometimes when you have cancer and go through treatment, there may be some different uh, restrictions around the food you can eat. Like one that comes to mind is fiber. So if you have um, a risk of bowel blockage, then you need to lower your fiber. And a lot of our risk reduction information is about increasing fiber. Anyway, enough about that for now. Um, our first recipe that we want to get into is an orange fennel salad uh, with tofu feta. Yep, uh, you heard me correctly, tofu feta. Um, so this recipe aligns with the recommendation to make whole grains, vegetables, fruits, legumes, which is also like your dried peas and beans and lentils, a major part of your usual daily intake. And what the cancer authorities have found is that a plant-forward way of eating or a plant-based way of eating is more helpful um, and protective for us. It can help reduce risk of not only certain cancers like colorectal cancer, but also is, is important for heart health and uh, blood sugar maintenance. And usually a plant-forward diet is rich in fiber. I mentioned that already before, right? We need about 25 to 30 per day, grams per day. Um, most of us in Canada are probably only getting half of that. We're not going to put you on the spot and ask you how much you're taking. Uh, contains phytonutrients, fancy way of saying nutrients in plants. Um, and they have various anti-cancer properties that they're finding in the research. And including about five servings of non-starchy vegetables and fruits. So Jeremy worked his magic. This recipe is a plant-forward recipe. Non-starch and fruit, we have oranges and, and uh, the fennel, tofu and lentils, plant-based protein, and they all contain fiber. Awesome. So <clears throat> from a cooking perspective, like Daniela mentioned, try to highlight um, that nutrition information, you know, more in the practical sense. It kind of look like on the plate when we're in the kitchen or we're eating out of a restaurant, whatever it may be. But also trying to maybe introduce some new ingredients in a more creative way for people. Um, tofu can be intimidating uh, for a lot of people, especially when they're trying to introduce more plant-based proteins. Who eats tofu in this group? Oh, we've got a few. It's Pretty changing. Good. It's changing. So I remember, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's it's starting to change. So it's just great. We're going to be doing something, something a little bit different with tofu. If you eat tofu, you probably know it doesn't really taste like much, so you have to add some, you know, flavor to it. Um, we're going to be treated, treating it. This is something that I, I learned from a colleague I worked with uh, from South America. We would take tofu and treat it like feta cheese. So feta cheese, if you've ever had feta cheese before, it's essentially a, a cottage cheese. In its natural state, it's not very flavorful, and then it's brine. They add a brine to it, which makes it like very salty, and tangy, and very flavorful. So we're going to do the same thing with tofu. We're going to treat it with feta cheese by frying it in the jar. Um, so, what I like to use for this is uh, firm or extra firm tofu, uh, block, try to press up as much water as you can, uh, a towel, doesn't matter, you don't get it all out, but try to get as much out as you can. The more water you get out, it leaves more room for more that brine, more that flavor to come. Okay. Um, for the brine, what I like to do is one part hot water, one part uh, vinegar. You can use anything, white wine, white vinegar, white wine vinegar, whatever you want, uh, and about a tablespoon of salt, okay? I've already dissolved salt in this part of the vinegar. That's, but it's easier if you do it in warm water. About a tablespoon of salt, you stir it through, and you're good to go. Um, for the tofu, I'll cut it into like big chunks. I'm doing like a very small version of this. I usually have like a bigger mason jar get the whole block. And what I can do is just break it up into like feta cheese, like feta cheese size blocks, or you can even leave it full. I just sort of like it a little more ridged. So I'll break it up into uneven, ununiformed pieces. 
press it into your jar. And again, uh, this is you know, this is a different preparation. If you like better cheese, you can skip this whole stuff altogether and just add better cheese. We're just trying to introduce, um, you know, maybe more unique ingredients for some people um, with a, a different preparation. And so that's why we're doing this. So we've got our um, our tofu in here, and then we're going to add our one part of the vinegar. Part the water, it doesn't have to boil, just bring it up to a simmer. It's good to go. My one to one is a little off, but measure at home. And then that's it. My jar lifts on top, and I like to turn it upside down. And then you can keep this in the fridge uh, for up to a week, and then you can add it to salads, whatever you want. Yes. Would you say that this alternative is like substantially healthier than feta cheese? Um, uh -huh. that's a good question. interesting question. Um, protein wise, protein wise, it's probably about the same. I mean, yeah. when I think of feta, I think about it being very high in salt. So with this, it's going to be a lot lower in salt. So that is one different advantage of that. Yeah. Probably get a little bit of fiber from this too that you wouldn't from feta cheese, but. Part of what we like to talk about too is having everything in moderation. So for sure, yeah. And I think it gives you an option if you have a dietary restriction that limits you from having cheese. Right. So it's, a, it's just an alternative there. Plus, probably lots of lowering fat. Yeah. Yeah. So you can put this in the fridge. Uh, the longer it sits, the more flavorful it will get. I've got one here. I have a fridge under here, by the way. So you have uh, all the secrets. Okay. <laughs> That is just a plain version. You can also add different aromatics to it. If you want to go all chefy, jazz it up a little bit. I have some like orange peel in here and some chilies and some oregano. Um, so now you're adding more flavor, right? So you can just do the basic one-to-one -one or you can bump it up a little bit and make it taste really cool. You put this on the table and people will be like, what is going on, right? Um, texturally, it is pretty similar to feta. It's not going to have as much of like a bounce or a sweep to it, but it's pretty similar. And then flavor wise, you're, you know, it's, it's going to taste as good as the brine that you make. So um, it's a great way to inject a little bit more flavor. And that's fantastic on like salads, put side, you can throw it, you can throw it with anything. So really good. All right. That's the first part. That's the hard part. The rest are going to make this really nice little salad to add it to. Um, it is Summertime, no surprise. Um, I like something salad wise a little bit more refreshing, a little bit more substantial, uh, not like a green leaf type of salad, personally, even though I, I enjoy it, but I do like something with a little more texture. So, there is something new. There you go. Uh, we're using, um, can anyone guess what this vegetable is? Test our fruit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. It is a fennel. Yes. Well done. 20 points. A few. Uh, fennel. So this is half a fennel. The bulb, you can imagine the rest of it. So uh, it's about a little bit less than half. And then these stalks that shoot off the top, it grows like this. So you will see that it's segmented similar to an onion, which is going to make it a little bit easier to dice, which I'm going to show you in a second. Also, the fibers grow from the ground up to the top. So anytime you are using fennel, if you've never used it before, texturally, like celery, very similar to celery. Flavor-wise, you're thinking about like anise flavor, or like black licorice flavor. I love it. It's not maybe for everyone, but it, it is really nice, really refreshing. Um, but when you cut fennel, you want to sort of cut it against that fiber, similar to celery. If you've ever like eaten an entire stick of celery and you just have like strings hanging out of your mouth, it'll do the same thing. So you want to cut against that uh, grain uh, to make a little bit more of a tender bite. Do so, you have a little extra that I can kind of give a piece for them to smell? Not to eat, just to smell. <laughs> it's not poisonous. No, no, no. I, I say not to eat yeah, because, yeah, yeah. oh, you put it in a plate. You know, you had your hands all over it. Yeah. So I didn't want it to go from one no, person no. to another in that way. So, anyway, yeah, it's not poisonous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can take a nibble and, yeah, pass it along. Uh, so, like an onion, it has layers to it which is going to make it very easy to cut, or a lot easier to cut, a lot safer to cut. 
Um, a big part of our program too is trying to make the cooking process more accessible for patients, especially if they are dealing with side effects. Like fatigue is a big one that we do see. Uh, knife handling, knife skills, just cooking in the confidence, uh, cooking confidence in general can be a little lower. So trying to make the cooking process a little bit safer is you know, one of our goals as well. Uh, so if has anyone seen any like a how to cut an onion video? That's like the most typical video. Okay, very typical in those videos, you will see this cross cut action. So you're cutting the onion in half, you're putting it down and you're starting to slice and push that knife towards your hand. And if you have resistance and now you're fighting against resistance, that's not going to be very safe, is it? Especially if you're not super comfortable with a knife. Anytime you're pushing a knife towards your hand, it's you know, a recipe for disaster. So because it's already layered, <clears throat> like an onion is already layered, you don't have to push it across. Unless you work in a Michelin star restaurant, you do not need perfect dices. Your chef is not gonna come around to measure each individual piece. All I need is, is a uniform piece. So I'm going to make lateral cuts, and then I will go across horizontally, across those lateral cuts to get my dice, right? You're gonna do the same thing with an onion because it's layered already. It already creates that dice for you. It makes it easier, it makes it safer, and it makes quick work of our piece of fennel, the root part, chunky root part here. Yeah, uh, we don't eat, it's just too tough, two fibers. And so we're slicing this up. Um, fennel, what would you like about fennel? Uh, yeah, well, first the aroma. Mm. I mean, just dicing it up here, I can, I can smell that aroma. How many of you like that aroma? Because I know there's those that like, okay, yeah. And then some not so, yeah, that's okay, okay. So what we like about fennel is that it's a non-starchy vegetable. Non-starchy vegetable really means that there's less starch in it, right? And um, it won't, and less carbohydrates. So fennel is a non-starchy vegetable. Um, carrots are non-starchy. Celery that you mentioned, tomatoes. Whereas a starchy vegetable is like potatoes and sweet potatoes, um, green peas. They have more, sugar, more um, carbohydrate in it and that turns into sugar. Um, both are good. But with the cancer prevention recommendations, we want to really increase our non-starch vegetables. And the fennel here, if we look at one cup, it actually provides about three grams of fiber per cup. And we want to up that, remember? We want, for women, we want to get about 25 grams per day. Men, we want to get about 38 grams per day. So this gets us closer to that. It also, I know I can keep going. <laughs> it also contains antioxidants. How many of you have heard that term, antioxidants? Okay. Anyone want to give, give a hazard as to what we mean by antioxidants? No? Put you on the spot a little bit? Yes. Uh, compound that reduces oxidation in itself. Yes, correct. So um, it reduces oxidation. Oxidation creates free radicals, unstable molecules that can accelerate aging and can also be connected with different conditions, right? Development of cancer, chronic conditions. So having an antioxidant in your food is a great way to help support the anti-cancer properties. And the ones in this, so vitamin C acts as a vitamin, and as an antioxidant. Then there's another one that I like to say called limonene. You'd think that would be in lemons. It probably is in lemons too, but it's in this as well. I'll stop. The orange? Uh, uh, the fennel. The fennel. The, 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 the orange probably has lemonene too, because it's a citrus fruit. Yeah. I just learned about lemonene. I like that. Don't you, I like saying it, limonene. I no. think limoncello, but yeah, yeah. not limoncello. No antioxidants for that little. All right, so we have our fennel diced with chock full of those antioxidants. Uh, a little bit of onion as well. Um, this is where, again, a lot of our recipes, when we do develop them, um, they're meant to be um, very easily uh, broken down and, and you can substitute the ingredients. Uh, we try not to make them too rigid. I don't cook that way anyways. I very sort of, I try to be as fluid as I can, use what you have. Um, and outside of like some of the maybe baked goods, these you can sort of follow the general structure to make any changes, make some substitutions. Um, so orange, sorry, fennel, onion, and then orange is next. With the orange, 
I'm going to show you a technique um, that is sort of a middle point in between just peeling an orange by hand and doing something in restaurants where we call suprême. Has anyone heard of suprême before? Yeah, okay, all right. Suprême is where you're individually taking out each little segment of orange, so it's beautiful and it's gorgeous and it takes forever. Uh, it's time consuming and no one's going to do it at home. So I'm going to show you sort of the midpoint so that we get a really nice sort of piece of bite of orange. Um, but it doesn't take too much time. First thing, you, if you have a clementine or mandarin, you just peel it, cut it up, and throw it in. That's sort of the easiest way. Uh, second is if you have like a navel orange like this, top bottom off. Any round vegetable that you are cutting, that is usually the rule off the top. Create a flat surface so that it does not roll around. Okay. And then with that orange, I can then follow the curve of it with my knife. You don't need a, a large knife for this. Perry knife actually works a little bit better. But we're gonna remove the peel. Try not to take off too much of the fruit because it, it's that sort of that white membrane, the outside of the orange that doesn't make the bite so pleasant. But we, we deal with it if we're just eating an orange as a snack, but it's not super nice. All right, so. You can do that with a paring knife too, right? Definitely yeah. easier with a paring knife. Yeah, I just, I just did not want to dirty another knife, but definitely do it with a paring knife. Um, and then we're going to cut it in half and then half again. So we have our quarters and we're exposing that sort of core piece in the middle. Also not so pleasant. Um, and if there are any seeds, this one does have, um, we can sort of knock them out that way. We've got this little piece. This is, I mean, obviously we live in an area where you can get produce and fruits um, any time of the year, no matter where it is, out of season, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing for some things, but yeah. <laughs> uh, can anyone guess when the season for citrus, like oranges, is? What would you think? Yes, in the back, the fall. Just at the end, tail end of the fall, but the winter. Winter is the season, so you wouldn't think because it, it seems like a summer fruit. We would probably enjoy them lemons, limes, oranges in the summer, but they are the best during that like tail end of the fall across winter. It's about like October to March, like that's like the peak for citrus. So that is the time to nerd out on citrus and nerd out on citrus during the winter. All right, so it's nice and clean now, so now I can dice up orange. This combination of orange and fennel, you would see uh, traditionally in Southern Italy, uh, I mean, other parts for sure of the world, but Southern Italy is a very uh, common salad with orange and fennel, sometimes onion, but very, very simple. But even just these three ingredients together uh, create this wonderful, army of flavors of uh, acidity textures where like after this it's good like this is delicious fantastic but we want to introduce that protein piece not that protein yeah. well. so tofu is going to be one tofu feta the other is one of our favorites uh dried lentils They're not dried lentils these are cooked lentils these are canned lentils drained and rinsed really easy um, again, like I mentioned, accessibility is a big part of our program, especially when it comes to um, budget accessibility and setting up your pantry with some of those really easy to go budget friendly uh, ingredients can be very helpful, especially if they're nutrient packed, like our friends here at the mental. Drain and rinse, that's going to go in. This version, by the way, I came across recently. Sprog cannery. It is fantastic. Yes, it's Canadian. And the lentils are gorgeous. Sorry, yeah. we're gonna nerd out to <laughs> lentils <laughs> are gorgeous from time to time. And of course, I'm looking at the ingredients, yeah, right? right? So yeah, so that's great. Full black lentils, then water, then sea salt. So yeah, that's awesome. awesome. So, so I guess you don't need the pan. No. Okay. And then Lentils, maybe I don't know if you want to talk about our favorite power couples. Yeah, oh, the favorite power, yeah. power couples. Yes, yes, we love our power couples. So, uh, when it comes to iron, 
there's team iron, non-team iron. Uh, team iron basically means iron, the mineral that you can find in animal products. And then non-team iron means the iron that you find in plant foods. The one you find in plant foods, like the, the, uh, the lentils here, is not absorbed as easily by the body. But if you share it with a food rich in vitamin C, it increases the absorption of iron from the lentils by 50%. So that's why we call it a power couple. So trying to get your um, plant sources of iron, if you're having a food like the lentils or even the tofu has some iron in it, or even like uh, breakfast cereals that have some iron in it, try to match that up with a food that has vitamin C to improve the absorption of the iron. All right, um, I'm gonna finish off the salad. Do you have anything else? To yeah, yep. yeah. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about the tofu just because we're, we're talking to an audience that of uh, cancer survivors or, or you know, caregivers for, for people who can't with cancer. So there's been this taboo around tofu. I don't know if you've heard about it with soy, about, oh, don't eat soy, it increases cancer. Um, phytoestrogens they talk about. Phytoestrogens, uh, when you put the word P-H, the, the uh, root uh, P-H-Y-T-O in front of a word, it just means that it comes from plant. So phytoestrogen, there's, there's an estrogen looking component in tofu, it's isoflavone. And because it looks like the hormone uh, estrogen, there was this fear that, oh my God, it must act like the hormone estrogen. But it does not. They've done so many more studies on it and they find that the action from the phytoestrogen is quite weak. And in fact, the health benefits of having some so, uh, so food, I kind of put that to having soy or having tofu in the diet outweighs the risk. And so if you are a cancer survivor of breast cancer, we say two to three servings today is actually okay. What we promote possibly avoiding is concentrated sources of soy. So a soy protein isolate. But having tofu, having soy beverages, having what else can we make? Oh, edamame, it's okay. Go for it. That's all. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Sofu is maybe the, the remarkable so food. Yeah. Oh, is there a sofu? No, I don't know. Okay. Let's do it. Why not? Let's do it. Okay. It's a business idea. That was part of Copywriting us right now. <laughs> um, so we're going to finish it off with our tofu feta. So again, this is the this is just the straight up one to one ratio. No other aromatics in here. You can see it looks pretty much the same, but you can smell it when when you try it. You know, you know, but it has like a brininess to it, um, very similar to what you get. But mild. So, it's not not too strong. Not too strong, yeah. and you're not going to get that like really salty um, taste that you would get from feta. Uh, so it's a little milder than that. But again, you can adjust your taste. So I'm going to pour that in. And then if you want some fresh herbs, you can throw some mint on there. I did add a little bit of olive oil, just salt. And mix this up. Now you have a little bit of acidity from the orange, but um, it's very mild, the acidity. So just to balance it out, we can add a little bit of vinegar. It looks beautiful, visually appealing, right? So it's appealing to our eye hunger, appealing to our nose hunger. Is your mouth watering? Your mouth watering. Tofu feta doesn't get you up. Yeah, no, they can. Oh, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we got a tofu forward Yeah, crap. I do. Dude, I forget that. Yeah. Um, and that's it. So we have, uh, you know, given like a little mix. But you have all these amazing little textures, both the orange, the crunch of the fennel, the lentils in there, and then the fresh mint, I think just really sort of elevates a little bit, um, but something different for like a nice summer salad.